Hello and welcome to Prime Business with me, Pius Kojobaka. Economist Professor Patrick Isuming has challenged government to harness its untapped resources to generate revenue domestically to finance its longer-term development plan without relying on external donors. His call follows a warning by the French government saying it is now cautious in the manner in which it lends long-term loans to Ghana. Reacting to the development, Professor Suming stated that it's about time Ghana looks within um, itself to finance its own projects. It's important that, you know, when it comes down to how to interpret, you know, being cautious, you get a sense that it means that, you know, there probably isn't going to be much coming. Now, I think that will increase the funding gap. Don't forget that in the current program that we are in with the IMF, we, we can only go get concessionary loans. If you are non-concessionary non -concessionary loans, there are restrictions. So if those sources, there are hints that those sources are going to be limited, then it means that we have to think long and hard about long-term financing. But I think that is something that we should be doing anyway. Mm. We know that we cannot continue to depend on external funding for our development. It's something that should have been obvious to us anyway. It is just a confirmation of maybe something that we have been reflecting on. So it's now time for us to look within and let's face it, I mean, there are many opportunities for Ghana to raise resources domestically for its development. There's, there's so much on tap potential. So while it seems a little troubling to hear, it should also hint to us that now we have to put our house in order and look within to finance our longer term development. Transport ministers from ECOWAS member countries have approved a regional strategy to make air travel more affordable. This initiative, when implemented, will remove some taxes on air transport and reduce aviation charges by 25%. The decision was taken at the Transport Minister's meeting in Lumia, Togo, to address the high travel costs in the region. Speaking to Joy Business, aviation expert Sean Mendes said the move is feasible. I think it definitely is something feasible. This is something that, uh, you know, is a, it, it requires the political will and obviously the political will to make the commitment uh, you know, has, has taken place with this agreement. However, the devil is in the details. And, you know, given the fact that they've given one and a half years before this has to be implemented, it's supposed to implement now in the first quarter of 2026, there is a high possibility that this will either fall by the wayside or be forgotten or, you know, implemented in a way that doesn't really see a strong impact for, uh, you know, for the traveling public and for the operating airlines. So we keep our fingers crossed, we're hopeful, but, uh, you know, we've, we've seen initiatives like this before which have, which have promised a lot and under-delivered, unfortunately. In more business news, APSA Bank has supported the call for stakeholders to collaborate to promote ethical business policies to grow the economy. To this end, the bank is emphasizing the need for government to inculcate ethical business practices and engage in open discussions aimed at advancing sustainability and ethics. Director of Marketing and Corporate Affairs at APSA, Nana Isilfua Tamaklu, um, has been speaking to Joy Business at the Business Ethics Network Conference here in Accra. This year's Business Ethics Network Africa Conference brought together thought leaders, policymakers, academics, and private sector representatives under the theme Agenda 2063 and a Sustainable Africa, the role of ethical businesses. The conference sought to explore ways in which ethical business practices can support Agenda 2063, the African Union's ambitious framework for transforming Africa into a prosperous, peaceful and sustainable continent by 2063. Nana Isifo Tamaklo, Director of Marketing and Corporate Affairs at APSA, added that government and key stakeholders must play an active role in realizing ethical businesses. This is not um, what I call an event, it's a continuous process. So we need to be engaging both government, private sector and some institutions, organizational institutions. We need to constantly be engaging on the issue of um, delivering ethical business or entrenching ethics in the way we do business in Ghana. So it's a dialogue. It's not an event. This is not over. We need to constantly be discussing this issue and make it a very integral part of how we deliver business across the country. As Africa faces the dual challenges of ethical growth and sustainability, the events discussion were more relevant than ever. 
The president of Ben Africa, Brian Robinson, emphasized the need for an open dialogue on ethical business practices to ensure environmental sustainability. Uh, we have so many important issues that we need to address as Africans. We've got poverty, we've got inequality, we've got, um, you, you know, we've got uh, conflict going on. So those are top of mind. But we, we also need to be aware that environmental issues are, are critically important and we need to address those issues now. Otherwise, we're going to be living um, in an, a very inhospitable world going forward. So starting those conversations between ourselves, uh, between those that we engage with is, is so important. Yeah. Then Africa aims to inspire a new generation of African businesses committed to ethical standards and sustainability. Helen Nakai IES report read to you. Thanks so much for being part of business, uh, Prime Business for today. I am Pius Kojo Baka. We have the very latest in the world of sports for you, after which we bring you more stories subsequently. But we've got the latest commodities updates next. Mm -hmm.